Hello and welcome to the quick start video tutorial for rectangular nesting with RhinoCam 2014 brought to you by Mechsoft. Let's load the part file containing the geometry for nesting. From the main menu select file and then open. Find the part file named rectangular nest quick start tutorial located in the quick start folder and then pick open. The following basic steps are included in the nesting process. In Rhino, we have staged the necessary geometry on the screen for the stock material and one or more production parts. We will then load the RhinoCam nest module and define the nesting type to be performed. Then we'll select the sheets to nest our parts in and then select the parts to nest. We'll choose our desired nesting parameters. Then we'll preview the nest making any final adjustments. Finally, we'll commit the nest creating the actual nested sheet geometry. Before loading the nest module, let's take a look at what we've done in Rhino to prepare for nesting. You can refer to this as the staging process. We have brought together and located on the screen the geometry that we want in the nesting process. As you can see, we have one or more shapes that represent the stock or the remnant material. We also have one or more shapes that represent the production parts that we want to nest within the stock material. Here are two tips to consider when staging your parts. First, when you stage your parts, stage them around the outside of the stock material not within the stock material. The nesting software will place the parts in the stock for you. Secondly, do not place parts inside the cutouts of larger parts as this may confuse the nesting software into thinking that it is a detail of the larger part. Keep all of your parts separated. Now let's launch the RhinoCam nest module. From the main menu select RhinoCam and then nest from the drop down menu to display the nesting browser. Notice that the nesting browser is organized into tabs representing each step in the nesting process. In this guide we will be demonstrating rectangular nesting so we will select that option. You will notice a help button located on each tab of the nesting browser. Selecting it will display documentation for each option on the active tab. From the Select Sheets tab pick Select Curves. Now we select the shape on the screen that represents the stock material and then right click to end the selection. Notice that an entry is made into the table. A default name is generated as well as the count and we'll get back to the grain direction in just a little bit. Let's change the count to two. This means that there are two identical sheets used to nest the parts. You can select additional shapes for stock but all of them must be rectangular. Next, we'll select our parts to be nested. Pick the Select Parts tab of the nesting browser and then pick Select Curves. Then we'll pick the exterior geometry of our parts and we'll right click to accept those. We'll pick Select Curves again and select the interior geometry just by windowing it and again right click will enter those into the table on the browser. Here is a good tip about selecting your parts. Selecting the exterior shapes of all of the parts first forces them to be at the top of the list in the table on the browser. This makes them much easier to find later when you need to change parameters such as count, orientation, or grain direction. The interior geometry of the parts can be at the bottom of the list because you will likely never change these parameters. Now we'll enter the count for each of the parts that are needed in the nest. You can ignore the count for any interior shapes as these will be assigned automatically to their associated parts each time the part is nested. There is one additional control option below the table called Orientation Step Angle with a default value of 90 degrees. This allows any part to be rotated in 90 degree increments to achieve a better fit. Now we'll select the Choose Nesting Parameters tab of the nesting browser to set two final parameters. The first one sets the distance between adjacent parts. We'll enter 0.15 there. 
The second is the distance between the outermost parts and the outer edge of the stock material. We'll enter 0.25 for this parameter. Now we select Execute Nest and then Preview Nest as well and notice that two sheets will be used. The last thing I would like to do is to impose a grain direction control on this larger part to force it to be vertical. In order to do that, I need to specify the grain direction on the stock material as well as that part. First, we'll go back to the Select Sheets tab and set the grain direction to a long X. Then, on the Select Parts tab, I will set the grain direction for part 6 to be vertical by setting it to a long Y. Now, we'll select the Choose Nesting Parameters tab. We'll execute and preview the nest again, and we see that the part is now aligned vertically. Each time the nest is generated, the system will calculate an efficiency factor, referred to as percent utilization of the stock material. Once we're satisfied with the layout of the nest, we will select the Commit Nest button. This writes the geometry of the individual sheets onto individual layers in your current CAD part file. The geometry can then be used for machining or any other application you wish. This completes the Quick Start tutorial for True Shape Nesting in RhinoCam 2014. For further assistance, you can visit the online help supplied with the program or visit www.mexoff.com for additional tutorials. Thank you.